And we got problems 17 to 19 in this video for your Algebra Chapter 7 self-test. Kind of just stole right from the book what you saw in your answers here for uh, number 17, where we have two functions for 17 to 19. We're going to use two functions. We're going to use this function, e of x, which is equal to 30 times 1.05 to the x power, and this other function called l of x, which will be equal to 30 plus 2x. And we're asked to sketch a graph of these functions. And graphing is tedious. Graphing is um, sometimes not very useful. But um, it can kind of show us what's happening with these functions over, over time. So this is kind of handy. I stole what you saw from the book so I can sh talk about what you see in the book um, in the answer here. And also because I really didn't want to make a graph. I just didn't want to do that. So I figured I'd just steal what you saw. So we have two functions here. And you'll notice the function e of x. And this is the curved one right here. It's the one that's kind of curved. And it's curved for a reason. It's curved because e is an exponential function. And we know that e is an exponential function because the variable in the function is an exponent. So whenever we have a variable for an exponent in a function, we know that it's exponential. It is not going up by the same amount. That's why there's this curve here. So from you know, 0 to 10, that change is not going to be the same change as it is from 10 to 20 and 20 to 30 and so on and so forth. It's not a constant change. We saw those sequences earlier in class. And then this function L of x is 30x plus 2x, 30 plus 2x, which is this straight line. And this is a straight line because the function L of x equals 30 plus 2x is in slope-intercept form, where the y-intercept of this function is 30. So you'll notice that when x is 0 in this function, in L of x, if x is 0, y is, or L of x is 30. So 0, 30, which is right there. And you'll see that that straight line crosses the y-axis at 30. If x is 10 in L of x, then L of x is going to be 50, because 20 times 10 is, or 2 times 10 is 20 plus 30 is 50. So if we plug in 10 into the function L of x, we get out 50. And that's exactly where that line lines up. And notice that the other function is around that area too. If we were to plug in 20 into L of x, 20 or 2 times 20 is 40 plus 30 is 70. So when we plug in 20 into L of x, we get out 70. And if we go down to 20 for x, and we go up to the line here, we end up at 70. So when we plug in 20, we get out 70. And if we were to plug in 30 into this function, we would have 2 times 30, which is 60, plus 30 is 90. So when we plug in 30 into that function, we get out 90. And then I can plot all those points and draw the line that goes through them, and I will have this line for L of x. For e of x, it's going to be the same thing. If I plug in 0 into, in for x, I'm going to get out 30, which is exactly where 0 and 30. Notice that those two functions line up at that same spot. So both of these functions have a y-intercept of 30. If I was to plug in 10 into this function here, 1.05 to the 10th power times 30, I have no idea what that is. But according to the graph, or if I plug that into a calculator, I would end up somewhere around 50. So 30 times 1.05 to the 10th power is somewhere around 50. So I would plot that point there. If I plugged in 20 into this function, I'd have 1.05 to the 20th power times 30. Plug that into a calculator. What would I get out? Well, according to the graph here, I'd get out something around 80. So if I plug in 20 into this function, I get out 80. But when I plug 20 into this function here, I got out 70. So now you'll notice that this one's kind of jumping ahead here, and we'll continue to do so as that line goes on. And then if I plug in, let's say 25, because 30 is going to go off the graph. When I plug in 25, it looks like I'm going to end up somewhere around 100. So when I plug in 25 into this function, 30 times 1.05 to the 25th power times 30, I'm going to end up somewhere at 100. So 25, 100 is on, the, on this line, e of x or this curve, e of x. And then once I have all these points plotted, that's where these lines come from. You can kind of just draw those lines. And beyond, on the left side of the y-intercept, is not extremely important. It's really just kind of graphing them in the first quadrant would really be all you need to do uh, for these two functions. If you want to go into the negatives, that's perfectly fine. Obviously, the book did that. But just kind of going from 0 
on would be perfectly fine to graph these two functions here. So a little tedious work there, but what, we, what this shows us is what the difference between exponential and linear functions look like on a graph. Exponentials are curved and linear functions are straight. So with 18, we can say which is greater, L of 9 or E of 9. Okay, now we're talking algebra here. Now this is stuff that's actually enjoyable to do and not very tedious. All we're doing is plugging things in and seeing what's bigger, L of 9 or E of 9. So we're taking 9 and we're plugging it into each function and just seeing what's bigger. So I'm going to plug in E of 9 first. I'm going to evaluate E of 9, and E of 9 is equal to 30 times 1.05 to the 9th power. I've just replaced x with 9 because that's what I'm asked to evaluate. I have no clue what 1.05 to the 9th power is, so I'm just going to plug this whole thing into the calculator. 30 times 1.05 to the 9th power, making sure that just 1.05 is the base of the exponent. We're not doing 30 times 1.05 and then that to the 9th power. We're doing 1.05 to the 9th power and then that times 30. It's our order of operations and 30 is not a part of the base of that exponent. So plugging that into a calculator, we should get 46.54. So E of 9 is 46.54. Now we're going to evaluate L of 9. And L of 9 is going to be equal to 30 times, or 30 plus, 2 times 9. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 plus 30 is 48. So the question is, which is greater, L of 9 or E of 9? Well, E of 9 is 46.54. L of 9 is 48. Let's see, which one's bigger? L of 9, because it's 48. And number 19, we want to give an example of a value of x for when L of x is less than e of x. So this one I'm going to go back to the graph that we drew. We want L of x to be less than e of x. So our graph for L of x is right here and our graph for e of x is right here. And we want to find a value for which L of x is smaller than e of x. And I'm just going to look in the first quadrant here. I'm not going to go into the negatives here. So just looking at this region right here L of x is the straight line, E of x is the curved line, and we can find there's a variety of answers here. There's more than, there's an infinite amount of answers, in fact, for this. But I'm just going to look at this part of the graph right here, and I'm going to look at our line L of x, and I'm going to wait for this to be below the line E of x. And notice right here, they're somewhere around the same. They're just about the same. It's kind of hard to tell which one's above which and which you know, where, where they are. And then you'll notice that there's a switch here. And all of a sudden, this is the line for L of x. And notice from just about this point on, from here on out, L of x is lower than E of x. Because the y values along here are smaller than the y values on this curve. So I can pretty much pick any point along here and then evaluate that value of x and see kind of where we're at here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick, I'm going to pick 20. It looks like right here because at 20, L of x is lower than E of x. So I'm going to evaluate E of 20 and just say, when I plug in 20 into E of x, what do I get out? And I'm picking that just from what I see on the graph. I could have easily picked 21 or 22 or 30. I could pick 100 if I want to. But again, I'm just working with what I'm looking at on the graph here. So e of 20 equals 30 times 1.05 to the 20th power. Evaluating that, e of 20 is 79.6. And that makes sense because if we go to 20 and then up to e of x, we're about right here, which is, makes a lot of sense. 79.6 is pretty close to 80. So e of 20 is 79.6. We want to take that same value and plug it into L of x. So we're going to find L of 20. And L of 20 is equal to 30 plus 2 times 20. So L of 20 is 70. And that makes sense because that's a point that's on the graph. L of 20 is 70. When we plug in 20, we get out 70. So give an example of a value of x when L of x is less than E of x. Well, when we plug 20 into these two functions, is L of x less than E of x? Yes, it is. So 20 is an applicable answer, along with a variety of other answers. I think anything from, looks like about 15 on, 15 and above would give a value of L of x that is less than E of x.